Well, it's uh, Captain Clark here out in the carriage house. We're uh, working on Phoenix and Wave today. We started off with uh, taking the clamps off the Phoenix for the uh, deck repair. And we're looking at the epoxy seam, which is right along in here. So we needed to get that fair. So we started off sanding it, use some uh, 120 grit, five inch disc on our DeWalt. Random orbital sander, we've got a, a brushless we've been using and we, we like it. It runs a long time on the bigger five amp batteries. Um, the handle's a little bit bigger though. My hand's about medium size, so that can get tiring after an hour or two, but of course any sanding probably gets tiring after an hour or two. We got the sander hooked up to the shop back and this uh, dust deputy that captures uh, most of the dust so we can uh, work out here in closed space. So once we got the epoxy sanded down, this is 1982 AMF Sunfish Phoenix got damaged during Hurricane Sally. We uh, came back with some uh, Total Boat Total Fair. It's an epoxy fairing compound. Mix up the yellow and blue, make the green, and then we just kind of troweled it on, use a calibrated paint stick to level it out over the epoxy repair into the seam, and then over this fracture that on the bow and along the chine. Uh, we put it on liberally so that when we come back with the sander in a couple of days, we can um, make it nice and fair. It felt like there was maybe a, a tiny little hump right in here. We're trying to raise this bit up a little bit, flatten out that bit a little. But you know, when you think about what the boats look like, uh, Skipper pointed out earlier, you know, we're pointing at little tiny little things when that whole section of bow was missing a couple months ago. So we moved over to uh, 1965 Alcourt Sunfish Wave. She had been primed with the top, Total Boat Topside Primer. We used the gray because we had a darker color coming over the top of it. Came in and just lightly, light pass over the top of it with the 120 grit on that sander just to put a little tooth in it, which is what Captain Jack would say. Uh, I learned today that someone says the proper, proper technical term is profile. So we made little hills and valleys so that uh, with the sander, sandpaper, so that this paint would have uh, something to latch onto, a mechanical bond versus you know chemical if you put two wet things together like epoxy and they're the same components they'll bond chemically but we're putting uh, this polyurethane paint over the top of some top side primer which is rated for one part paints and we talked to the jamestown distributors tech team uh, folks about it said it worked before we've used it before and we know it works the key is just getting the uh, subsurface uh, clean, free of any uh, blush or those kind of things before you put the other product on top of it. So this is Interlux Brightside Polyurethane Medium Blue. We bought it from Jamestown Distributors and also the, uh, the brushing liquid to go with it, the 333. They sell a nice uh, roller kit that comes with two uh, roller covers, the, the frame and the a pan, a couple sticks, and some gloves. So all that came together in one little batch, which is what we like, saved us a trip to Lowe's. But when we were at Lowe's, we buy like our little two inch sash brushes. Uh, this is a Blue Hawk brand made for oil paint. So we uh, mixed it up. We used a uh, Louis big, uh, big, big stick mixing method, a uh, little bit wider stick to get down the bottom and mash all those um, all the solids that are in the paint, mash it around, stirred it, uh, shook it, dumped some in the total boat uh, mixing cup. We added a, started off with about, we put about a third of a quart in there, then put about three capfuls of thinner, or what they call it, brushing liquid. And it's about 52 degrees out here in the carriage house. Started working at the bow. Uh, we'd roll, we'd roll a section. I don't know, about uh, close to a foot wide, maybe eight, eight to ten inches. 
and then we'd it have little bubbles on it, so we'd come back and brush it. We'd feather it into the wet edge and just kept working it section to section. And after a couple of sections, it felt like it was dragging, meaning the roller was kind of sticking, the brush wasn't. You could feel it grabbing, going across the paint. So we added in uh, another cap of thinner, felt a little better, did a couple more sections. And then once we got back here, we had probably five caps of thinner and about one third quart. And it brushed on pretty good from there. We probably could have even gone a little thinner after that, but we were happy with that. Went down, uh, did the port side first, kind of made sure I had feathered edge in the middle and uh, did a little area right past the magic finger here, right past the splash guard, which had some, uh, just some rub marks, some other wear and then came back and started on the starboard side. Worked our way back there. So if you remember Wave, uh, back September, she didn't have a starboard side. So, and her bow, this chunk of bow right to back about in here was completely detached and hidden under the sunfish shack. And this chunk here was didn't exist except for a little flap of the uh, side plank which we have uh, hanging up on the wall in the back there with the red stripe on it as a memento so we grafted in the new piece and now it's uh it's like it never happened so we're gonna let this dry it's gonna see you can see where i kind of did a strip behind the combing it's gonna dry darker and we're debating whether to continue painting or just leave the back half as a, it's got a little bit of patina on it, not too much, and maybe put a, might put a little red stripe if we see a line there between the, the January 2021 paint and the, the uh, paint, that other paint in the back's about four coming up five years old, so it's holding up great. Maybe take that little one inch red stripe and maybe throw it on the deck and it just becomes one more bit of history for the boat. So that's what we've been uh, doing today. We're going to let all this dry. It takes a little bit longer with it being cooler. The epoxy went on yesterday around uh, about three o'clock or so and then coming out today about 24 hours later. It was still a little gummy in places. But if you sand it long enough, you get to heat it up and get it gone and you can continue to work. So we hope y'all are doing good and staying warm uh, wherever you're at. And Phoenix and Wave say howdy, and we'll talk to you again soon.